So we use a catch pot to give us a, a means to capture any resin that potentially comes up the exit vent tube, the clear tube, and let that be collected in a catch pot prior to going up and affecting any of the sensitive components as in the vacuum regulator or worse yet, the vacuum pump. So now Don's turning that vacuum on. He'll grab the lid to give it a chance to get a seal and we'll see the vacuum come up on the gauge. Now, that's a vacuum regulator, a lot like you think of with a compressed air regulator. In this case, it adjusts vacuum level and he's gonna set the vacuum on that cavity at 15 inches. So we've pulled, in effect, half of the atmosphere out of the mold cavity area. So now the mold cavity is under a controlled vacuum of 15 inches. The perimeter flange, let me step in here and I'll point these out. The perimeter flange is this black ring area all the way around the mold. That's clamping the mold closed and we've got just over 23 inches. But onto this line, which is affecting the mold cavity where the fiberglass is, that's only 15 inches of vacuum. I mentioned to you earlier about the RFID tag. A unique feature of the Infuser Aviator is the simplicity of a tag, the RFID tag. You'll see all Don needs to do is put this tag on that reader and hit the start button and the Infuser Aviator knows then that it's connected to the tub mold which gets 12 counts. So when he hits start, it'll read the count or read the tag. Remember that's 12 counts. It'll begin the injection and stop exactly at 12 counts. So we can achieve the molding with accuracy within just a few grams of resin, part to part to part to part, because the machine stops automatically. Let me get out of the way and let Don continue with what he's doing. Okay, now Don's setting, he's got his process details there. He's setting the injection pressure. He's gonna set the pump speed based on the process. He's going to check the catalyst ratio and set it to the prescribed level for this particular molding. Now often those levels are the same for multiple moldings in the operation. And what sets the aviator apart from say the PRG, our top of the line equipment, is his having to make these settings manually. In a PRG, just the RFID tag sets all the rest of the values in the machine. So, it, so the only difference in a PRG and an aviator is the operator has some involvement, some responsibility to set the controls. He is set now to be in the inject position and the RFID. So once he's ready to inject, all he'll need to do is take the tag and put it on the reader. So in a moment here you'll see that injection. Don's got the gun connected, he switched the catalyst on and he's opened the line to the mold and now he hits the start button. With the RFID tag in place, the infuser read the tag and you can see that you can't see it in the film but there's 12 counts. Now it's down to 11. Now you saw it hesitate, slow down a little bit. Well what was happening there is that pressure, the in injection pressure control device at the, at the end of the static mixer there was controlling the pump speed now. It, it took over from this regulated control and set the speed, which he's just checked is 1.6 liters a minute. A little bit on the fast side for this particular size part, but for the video we're doing. We'd like to normally set this up in production that that part is, is injected at about 1.1 to 1.3 liters a minute. But we're expediting the fill a bit for this demonstration. Let me get out of the way here. In a moment, you'll see the aviator stop automatically at 12 counts. There it was, and it was about a minute to inject that part. So we said we did that a little bit on the fast side, but you're being a minute, minute 20 seconds at the most would take to fill that part. Relatively fast, I think you would agree. Okay, now Don will show you how to flush the machine, because if we don't flush that head out, 
well then obviously it'll turn into the same solid consistency as the part. So in a moment here you'll see just how simple it is to clean the entire mix head out. So we had a, a slight delay there. We had to get our solvent uh, receiving pot so it's got that set up now um, ready to go. It, it uh, wasn't prepared to be injected the solvent, the cleaning solvent into. So we lost a couple seconds time there. Now you see Don's got the head disconnected and he's shutting the catalyst off which is always a good idea to leave that in the recirc position and he's going to take the static mixer over and aim the tube that's connected to the static mixer into the covered container and simply press the flush button. There, you hear, that's the air blowing out the excess resin that's in the mix head. In a moment here you'll hear the, the aviator switch, there it's switched, now it's pumping solvent in and then you'll see now that's the glass blowing cleaning air and drying the head out 